Hi, I'm Susan Moore, and today I get to talk to Dr. Shane Rowan. We're going to talk about heart rhythms, and we're going to learn everything that he does and all the things we need to do to watch and make sure our hearts are healthy. Dr. Shane, you know, I'm just going to call you Shane. That's you, fine, Susan. You Please. are such a fresh, scrubbed face, new to Greeley, and you came from? Uh, I was in Cleveland before this for two years, but I grew up mostly in Tennessee. But where's your favorite place to live? A uh, Greeley, of oh, course. Thank you. We love it here. You have a really big title, and I'm just going to say, uh, first of all, what is EP? So EP is short for electrophysiology or an electrophysiologist, someone who studies the electrical system of the heart. Now, my own mother cannot remember electrophysiologist, and so either. I always tell folks, oh, I'm an electrician of the heart. If I just walked in and said, would you check my heart rhythm, or do people usually have a symptom before they come and see you? We'll, we'll get referrals for things other physicians have noticed. Uh -huh. So your primary care physician may listen to your heart and say, oh, I hear a skip uh -huh. there, or may do an EKG and see something abnormal on that. Mm -hmm. And then we also have people who come to us for symptoms. Okay. Common things I get is, oh, I'm having palpitations, my heart's skipping around, or oh, I have these fast heartbeats that come on for no reason. Um, uh, those are sort of the typical people we'll see. We also see folks who pass out because of concern that it might be a rhythm problem. Um, and then we see folks for uh, consideration for procedures. We do things like pacemakers, defibrillators, and these fancy studies called ablations where we actually go in and study the heart's electrical system in great detail. Tell me what a typical day would be at the practice. A typical day is divided between clinic and the hospital. I might see you in the office, or if you were in the hospital for something else, I might get, get called in to uh, consult on your case there and lend, lend a hand to someone else. So uh, atrial fibrillation, hmm. and what do I need to know about that? So atrial fibrillation is important. It, it is the single most common heart rhythm abnormality that we deal with. It turns out that by the time we get to age 80, about 10% of people will have atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. So one in 10 people, and by medical standards, that's really, really common. Um, some people get it earlier, of course. Not everybody waits until they're 80, and uh -huh. so we see it through all phases of life. And it's an irregular heart rhythm. Uh, the heart has, um, it's a little bit like a house. Uh -huh. It has these four rooms in it. Two are in the upper story and two are in the bottom story. And it's the upper story that really drives the action in the heart. And so that upper story will go out of rhythm and become entirely irregular. The electrical system that normally guides the heart loses all control and becomes static. Uh -huh. S that static is atrial fibrillation. Sometimes people feel it, and it can make them miserable. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably more importantly, it increases a person's risk for stroke. And so trying to modify that risk for stroke and make people feel better are why atrial fibrillation is commonly seen by us and why it's so important. So I'm just thinking what, you know, have I felt any of these things, blackouts? <laughs> have I, you know, am I just missing it? But honestly, I just think my heart just pumps right along. I don't think I have a problem. I'm glad to hear that. So um, I wouldn't be one. I, I hope we don't have to see each other except in social situations. <laughs> Nice. Um, uh, no, really, the heart is an amazing machine. If you think about it, you've got this muscle in here that's about as big as your fist. Really? And it beats 100,000 times a day, every day, all your life, and almost never misses a beat. Wow. Now, if I were to hook up heart monitors to you and me, yeah, we'd skip a couple beats here and there, but it'd be like between 0 and 10 a day. Uh -huh. And most people don't feel them at all, and so okay. they shouldn't trouble you, and they don't. What technology is available to treat you know, some of these rhythm problems? Uh, we're very fortunate. There's a lot we can do for people. Okay. Um, depending on what the problem is, we can sometimes address it with medicines without using any fancy technology or procedures. Uh, sometimes we can insert devices, things like pacemakers or defibrillators, to help people with their heart rhythm abnormality. But they treat slow heartbeats and help speed up the heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, defibrillators are the opposite. They take uh, dangerously fast heartbeats and convert them back to a normal heartbeat. What's that called? A defibrillator, or you'll also hear people call it an ICD. Beyond that, we do these procedures called ablations, and that's really the heart of what the electrophysiology field is. We can put wires up in the heart and actually track down short circuits in your electrical system, if you were having some, which fortunately uh -huh. you are not. Not yet. Um, 
And then we can go after those and we can zap them or get rid of them to cure people of their electrical issues. Zap them? Zap them. It's a technical word. I love it. Um, technically, we can freeze them or use what's called radio frequency energy to heat them up and make them go away. But at the end of the day, I like to say zap. I do too. I really do. When do people normally start really checking on their heart? I, I think um, checking on the heart in some sense happens at hopefully a young age. Blood pressure is probably the most important okay. thing you should check it when you're young. Right. Uh, often people will have an EKG at some point in their life. But we end up seeing patients from all ages in the electrical field. That's one of the reasons I like it. We'll see the very old who have problems with the... Uh, electrical system wearing down as they get uh -huh, older. Sure. Uh, and then we'll see people who are teenagers who are born with uh, electrical defects in the heart oh. that we can help them with. So Dr. Shane Rowan, or I'm calling you Shane, when you do get time off, what do you like to do? Do you like to golf? Are you a cowboy? What, what's your I used time. to golf. Having you? children ruined my golfing game. It's been five years. Five um, years. And how old is your oldest? Five. Yeah. <laughs> Coincidence? I don't think so. Exactly. <laughs> and I've uh, taken up skiing again since I've been out. Downhill? Here. Yep. Oh, Downhill. cool. No, cross country is much too much work. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but probably good for your heart. It is, it is. Yeah. I'm not sure there's a better form of cardiovascular is exercise, that it? actually. That's the one. It really works everything. Well, Shane, on behalf of all of Northern Colorado, I want to tell you how happy we are you're here. And uh, you're going to love it, and your kids are going to love it. Thank you, Susan. It's great to be here. Thank you.